live from MMA Fighting Studios, this is Between the Links. And now, your host, Mike Peck. The iconic voice of Esther Lynn welcomes you to a brand new edition of BTL on another Thursday. And you know what? Sometimes you head into these Thursday shows and you're thinking, what the hell are we going to talk about? We could talk about things that happened last week that are kind of storylines, but not much. Things that are happening this weekend where there's a couple of storylines, nothing really major going on. And then you decide, let's just do a and a episode. And then lo and behold, UFC CEO Dana White makes a whole bunch of announcements. So we do have something to talk about. And that's exactly what we're going to do here on the program. And joining me to answer your questions, Mr. No Gray Area, the hot take kid, the cannonball kid, Mr. Jed Mishu. Jed, how are we doing, buddy? <laughs> this is just terrific. Yesterday, you know, before we log off, I get the message from you. Hey, uh, we're not going to do a competition this week. We'll, we'll just do the Q&A. There's just nothing happening uh, this week. And I was like, yeah, honestly, it's totally reasonable and fair. I go to bed, I wake up, and suddenly there are things happening mike so should be a good one get those questions in video editor extraordinaire joining us as well he will be uh deciphering through your questions probably chiming in on some of the topics as well casey you're there how are we doing your, there he is your, your your internet was a little bit choppy you're going doing a little max headroom for a moment but i think you're there now can you move there you go. All right. He's blinking. I blink. Okay, that's all that matters. I <laughs> We're back, baby. We're back. We're back. Uh, so, obviously, get the questions in. Uh, super chatters, you get to cut the line. Real quick, if you haven't checked it out, and I'm glad both of these gentlemen are here. Oh. Uh, the debut episode of Swing Rounds live on the MMA Fighting YouTube channel. Myself, Mike Perry, playing nine holes of golf. And I know what you're thinking, ah, oh, I've seen these YouTube videos, the YouTube golf scene. I don't want to watch these guys play golf for 90 minutes. You don't have to. A nice, tight, fast-moving, beautifully shot 18 minutes for you guys to check out. And it's everything you would hope it would be and dream of. Shout out to Jed Mishu, who shot this like an absolute savage. And then shout out to EKC line who put it all together just magically so thank you gentlemen make sure you guys go check that out and as the questions are compiling jed let's just get right to the big news and i want to get your reaction to this dana white just after midnight eastern time jumps on social media makes the big announcement ufc saudi arabia june 22nd main event robert whitaker the former middleweight champion of the world taking on hamzat shemaev that is your headliner other fights announced, Sergey Pavlovich against Alexander Volkov, which created a little bit of a stir. I'm sure we'll get questions about that. Kelvin Gasolum, Daniel Rodriguez, Johnny Walker, Volkan Ozdemir, and Shara Bullet Magomedov taking on Ihor Potieria. So those are five fights. Uh, Jared Gordon is also on this card, taking on Nazrat Hakparast. So right now there's six fights on the books. Your reaction? to these matchups announced by Dana White and more specifically Robert Whitaker versus Hamza Chimaev. My first reaction was, oh, wow. I didn't think I really saw that coming. And then my second reaction was almost immediately following that sort of first moment of disbelief was, uh, yeah, remember when Saudi was going to get Muhammad Makai? <laughs> <laughs> that was that was ridiculous. This is much more appropriate. This is already, you know, we're six fights in. Uh, I don't, don't know what they'll round the card out with. Maybe it will be a bunch of contender series dudes. You never can can know for sure. But this is a fight night card. Like this is a good fight night card uh, already, which is honestly the expectation that we as fans should have for all fight night cards. Um, I'm sure we'll get into this weekend's one. But uh, it's not as good, frankly, as what as, as what Saudi's getting for for their debut effort. And this is this is great, uh, interesting matchups. It's, you know, some matter more than others, obviously. And the main event is, I don't know what to think of it, Mike. What what were your thoughts on this one? Because it, it's I, obviously it's a fine fight. Um, 
I understand what it does for Hamza, right? Hamza wins this number one with the bullet. He's fighting for the belt, uh, probably in 2025 because somehow this man fights once a year now, but like, I get that. But if, if Bobby Knuckles wins, where does that put him in the title picture? Not far off, but I, I kind of assumed we were going to get Robert Whitaker, Sean Strickland. And so now this is, this is interesting what it does to the middleweight title picture. Agreed. Love the matchup. I think of all the actual options here. And I think I probably expected Hamza versus Paul Acosta because of the built up beef and those two guys can sell. I got to say, this is probably the most intriguing matchup they could put together outside of TDP Izzy, in my opinion. I'm very much looking forward to it. I didn't see it coming like you, but now that we have it, I love it. I absolutely love it. And it's going to be interesting to see where, where the rest of these guys go. Dana did say, and if we're going to take Dana at his word, and you know the man never lies, it's a number one contender fight. Winner's getting a title shot. Just ask guys like Bilal Muhammad and all these other guys who have fought in number one contender fights. Hamza Chimaev just fought in a freaking number one contender fight in his most recent fight against Kamar Usman. So depending on who you believe, the winner of this fight is going to get a title shot. And if Robert Whitaker goes out there and hands Hamza Chimaev his first loss, I don't care if he's fought Izzy 18 times. I don't care if he got knocked up by DDP three weeks ago. He's probably getting a title shot, and I would actually be okay with that. I mean, yeah. like I do. I agree. I do think that this is, if you're Whitaker, the path is clear. I take this fight. I win this fight. I do get a title shot. And I don't think anyone will be upset for it. But it then just is, what are we doing with Sean Strickland? Because, you know, the... It, it feels like we're getting DDP Z. That's obviously been even rumored for 305, I think, in Perth. But where's Sean Strickland fit in? Because prior to last night, I would have said Sean Strickland was higher on the, the title shot list, right? Like, But now Robert Whitaker can jump him, and I don't know where Sean Strickland goes from here. So interesting stuff at middleweight right now. I think you do Paul him and Paul Acosta. I think that makes sense. You could do... If you do Dustin Poirier challenging Islam Makachev, let's just say it happens June 1st, that's the main event. Throw Sean Strickland, Paul Costa in there is like the co-main event. It's a pretty damn good one-two punch to make up for what we're, at least on paper, going to see at 301. So I don't, I don't hate that. No, here's what we're doing. I mean, so I don't hate that at all. Maybe that is what happens. But uh, if Brendan Allen gets past Chris Curtis this time around, uh, then, you know, all the storylines are there to let Brendan Allen, uh, you know, fight Sean Strickland again and do the, okay. I, I, I beat your teammate finally after I lost to him. I'm going to do the same to you. No, because there's somebody else <laughs> no. in this conversation. No, because there's somebody else in this conversation that is often forgotten that has literally nobody to fight right now. So Brendan Allen beats Chris Curtis. He's probably, poor Jared Cannonier has a case but now Mike, he's going to have to fight Brennan Allen. He's going to have to go fight Brennan Allen instead. Mike, we had all agreed to just not talk about Jared Cannonier, and maybe he would vanish. So you can't be bringing wow. up his name because that ruins the gimmick. If you would just slide away and and we'd all, we'd all be okay with it. We'd be like, yeah, that's fine. It's totally acceptable. So uh, no, Brennan Allen's been trying to fight Sean Strickland again. He's about to fight his teammate again on short notice. If this time he overcomes Chris Curtis, we're doing it. Uh, book it. Let's get Brendan Allen a title shot in 2025. Yeah. There you go. You seem very excited about this idea. Uh, Casey, what did you think about this Whitaker Shemayev matchup? Cool. I mean, just as long as Shemayev's fighting, that's all. I don't. I mean, as long as, as, long as he's fighting a guy in the top five, um, I just hope the winner actually gets a title shot. Um, yeah, pretty much everything you guys said. Um, no real. I'm just... I just want to see it happen. I'm kind of tired of the Shemayev, like, I don't know, whatever his issues are. The guy fought every, like, 13 seconds a couple of years ago. Now we see him every decade. So, I don't know. I'm just, uh, I just want to see it. Just That's all. I, 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 his prime. Yeah, I'm just, like, I'm not, I don't want to get, I don't want to get too hyped up because I feel like it's just, I don't know. Until it actually, we see them in Saudi Arabia or something. I'm just kind of not believing it but so far. So it sounds cool, and I hope it actually gets the title shot. I, just, I hope fights mean something, basically. 
Yes. Wait, the, uh, the, the, other, the Usman, the Usman, the Usman fight that was supposed to wait. Was it who did Usman yes. fight last time? Yeah, that was that was for a title. Usman. That was yeah, that was supposed to be for. I thought that was the okay. Yeah, that was I, 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 it was like sort of around, but. I just Hamzat's just career has been weird. He fought. You guys realize he fought three times in two months, and uh, since then, in the ensuing three years since then, he has fought four times. Like, what? Just a baffling career turn this man has taken. What year yeah. was that when he fought those three times? Twenty. It was twenty twenty. It was COVID. It was twenty twenty. Okay, so. <laughs> Wow, is that that's, that's when they were doing Fight Island COVID? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, I, I I didn't. I was like, man, it's that long ago now. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Pretty wild. Pretty wild. Uh, two other things about this card. Uh, both are pluses in my opinion. ABC, which is awesome, oh, and know. since it's happening in Saudi Arabia, more than likely, it'll be an early card. Yeah, which we like. I like which this. we like. I mean, congrats to Saudi. Uh, the sports washing's going great. Like you're you're getting on ABC, and nobody's like thinking twice about it. like it's. Uh, I'm. This is not even me being like moralistic about. It. It's just like what you guys did it. Way to go. Like I, I'm not being. <laughs> but I'm like, you you won. Congrats, man. <laughs> like, the money won out, and that's good enough. Yep. M- money is undefeated once again. Mo- yep, money, money is, money money is, is other time. Money. Keeps winning, man. And it's, look, <laughs> I mean, look, I, we live in America. It's not like we have a great moral high horse to stand on, but it's just, I there's not even a contest. <laughs> there, there was at least like, ooh, is this like okay? Nope, whatever, it's fine. Put them on ABC prime time, baby. <laughs> but, Let's go. but what about that one thing? Hey, we got Shemayev on the card. Woohoo! <laughs> Let's do it. Just think of all the commercials that run, man. Congratulations. Visit visit Saudi Arabia. Visit Saudi Arabia is going to, that website's going to be off the chain on June 22nd. Beautiful. Congrats, man. You guys won. Well done. (laughs) You did it. Well done. All right. Let's uh, let's go to the peeps. There's other things we could discuss, even in regards to the announcements. All right. Let's see what we got. Uh, Uh, Let's go to our super chats first. And we got a super chat from Chase. Chase, I remember you guys told me UFC 302 in Newark would be headlined by Leon Bilal too with the London card in July. Is it likely Jersey gets Islam versus Dustin Poirier? So we didn't tell you uh, that that was going to happen. We assumed as much because all year long, the UFC's return to the UK, which has always been expects to be Manchester was going to be a fight night card. Dana has even said it himself at various points that it was going to be a fight night card. And then just recently he changed his mind that it's going to be a UK card because he understood that he is two UK champions and Leon Edwards and Tommy Aspinall right now. So it only makes sense to shift gears here. There are the questions I have regarding July and we'll maybe get to those, but I basically, because I think we brought this up, we talked about the Jorge Mazadal Nate Diaz fight happening on June 1st, that the best they can hope for, especially with like an $80 price tag, is that Leon Edwards versus Bilal Muhammad is the main event for 301. UFC is still going to do better buys, but if you do Islam versus Dustin Poirier, freaking no one's buying Mazadal versus Diaz. So do you think now, Jed, uh, that June 1st, if you had to guess, if there's a betting line on it, let's just say it's even money, would you bet that Islam Makachev versus Dustin Poirier will headline UFC 302? I guess. I don't know. Um, I've just been operating under the virtual certainty that Islam was going to Saudi. Uh, it would appear that's not the case. Islam has repeatedly said he wants to fight in June. If that's the case, they just need to announce it. Because if that's the case, you're – there is no viable turnaround for the 300 people. I guess just because that's, that's like June one, right? Like that's, that's April 13th to June one. So the dudes fighting at 300 can't, they're not making a five week turnaround or whatever that is. So if that's the case, yeah, just go ahead and announce that fight. And it's, it's okay. It's kind of weird, right? Like, but it's fine. Like there's two big stars 
Jersey will be okay with it. It, it doesn't, there's not like a connection there, but sometimes that it's not like Leon Bilal would have been a connection either. So it's that, uh, but I, I will just say chase, I love you. Thanks for super chatting with us. You come in with a lot of confidence that the UFC <laughs> won't book Leon Edwards knowing they're going to England because we have seen them do this a bunch this year. Alex Pereira is fighting one month prior to them going to Brazil. They don't give two fucks about doing things smart. So like it is absolutely possible. They still just say, all right, Leon, you're fighting here. Oh yeah. We are going to England. You do not get to come. Like that's absolutely still in play. So uh, I would hope that logic would win out and that wouldn't be the case, but i I wouldn't bet my life on it is what I'm saying. Casey, what do you think? Her. It's great points by Jed. Great points by Jed. But now that they announced Saudi and look, could they be kind of holding this one just behind, just hoping that Connor Chandler happens June 29th? Because if for some reason that falls through and with Connor, everything is possible here. You could obviously ship that one to the main event of International Fight Week. You get Islam, Dustin, two big so stars. It would make, more, it would make way more sense there. Yeah, but you can't do it if Connor's headlining yeah, against you Chandler. You can't do it if it's there. You, yeah. don't, you don't do it. You got to get two bites of the apple. So if Connor Chandler is a go, June 1st, Islam versus Poirier. Is that three? That Would that be 303 or 304? What? 303 would be three. International Fight Week. Okay, there they <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I I mean I gotta be honest with you, <laughs> the chant the Chandler the Chandler Connor thing just kind of throws me for a loop because I just don't believe it's gonna happen. So everything just kind of messes up in my head, honestly. And now this now that Islam isn't fighting in Saudi Arabia, I'm just kind of I and I just kind of found this out like 20 minutes before. Like, I kind of just started my work at like 20 minutes ago, so I'm just kind of. Soaking it all in. Actually, I don't really have a good idea, to be honest. Right? It just seems like to be a giant mess. And it, it doesn't really matter where the location is. It's just all about availability. And and they'll put anyone anywhere, I think. It doesn't really matter. It's, it's hard to give logic to the UFC right now. It's just whatever works, works. And and, and they'll, they're making money. That's all, that's, all I kinda, that's all I really feel right now about the UFC and booking. Yeah. They yeah. don't. They don't care who they book in yeah, places because they're going to sell out. Yeah, that, that's what I mean they're right now. I mean, I, 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 I could kind of go. About the fan experience being. This dope. could go here. This could go there. But like, I've kind of. I feel like I've kind of burnt my own brain, kind of trying to apply logic to it. But now it's just like, okay, whatever. There's Alex Pereira's fighting in a month instead of you know in Brazil, because yeah. it's just that's the way it is. I don't know. There's no real logic other than it's a main event main event worthy if they end up if they end up going to manchester and they just announce it we're doing a card on i don't know when they're going to do it if they do it july 20th that's the same day as jake paul versus mike tyson Ooh. if they do it july 27th which is from conversations i've had that's what's like kind of being thrown around right now uh for that card makes sense so Ooh, we'll going, against, going against jake paul mike tyson on a free card I'm assuming it's free, just a subscription-based card on Netflix, right? Yeah. It's, yep. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that. Yeah, I don't think that would work. Oh, I mean, that, I guess that would be the time to throw out Liam Bilal. <laughs> but they're Honestly. supposed to go to. They're also supposed to go to Salt Lake City around that time because that's usually. You know, I, I think August. that's just going to get bumped. Third of August, maybe. Yeah. Well, I no, because they're going to Perth in August. No, I, I think that they'll just bump that back. It's they can go to Salt Lake City another time. Yeah. Or whatever yeah. and still get as long as they get it in the year but they want to do the things that they've wanted done i i think the salt lake city thing is just not happening until the fall yeah all right all right thank you chase thank you thanks chase uh another super chat coming in uh from michael hey my fizzy versus darius oh darius <laughs> okay I was like Darius who? Uh, Vizier, Hootie, Hootie, Darius Hootie, and the Blue, Hootie and the Blowfish, oh, yeah. Darius. Darius, Darius Rucker. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Or yeah. maybe Darius Flowers. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. Remember the UFC roster. I was going I King Darius. Don't... Oh, King <laughs> Darius, yes. 
Um, <laughs> it would be a good. I mean, that would be a good matchup for Saudi. I just don't think Fazeev is going to be able to fight in June. He, I mean, that dude suffered a gnarly injury. He's going to be out for a for a hot minute. So, how long has he been out? See. When was his fight? Was like November? Was it November that he I fought? Hold on. Yeah. Camera. When was that card? Maybe it was October. Uh, September twenty third. Yeah, he's so, probably not coming back in that yeah. time frame. That's probably around the time that he would actually be like cleared to go back to training. Right. Yeah, I would say maybe like end of the year months, for physique. Eight, eight, nine months. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that that's unlikely. Yeah. Who would Darius fight? I don't know. Darius is. Yeah. So was he going to two fight? Luke? What is Darius on? What is his streak right now? Two, two fights in a row. Yeah, two big knockouts in a row. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe if Jalen Turner beats Sonata Moicano, you turn him around. That's where I would see Darius right now. Okay. Yeah. Or if like Jim Miller beats Bobby Green and he's a ranked fighter, maybe you give Ooh, him that. Darius Jim Miller. That sounds kind of fun, actually. You're right. I like that. That, that I think that's a fight that works for both of them. If I'm Darius, I do not take that Fazeev fight. <laughs> that's all. If, if even even yeah. Fazeev, if Fazeev is healthy and ready to go, I, I would I would avoid that if I'm Darius. I think at this point yeah. in his career. I mean, it's a fun fight for the fans, but for Darius's own career. Fight. I would try and fight BSD. Hmm. Well, you could do that. My thought was yeah, November, was Madison Square Garden, main card opener, BSD versus Rafael Fazeev. Just let them two set the friggin' table, baby. Just let them get after it. That'll be fun as hell. Would Fazeev take that? Yeah. I I think so. I think I think cause I think I don't think BSD uh, lost that much. I, I think I think with the staff infection story and you know he did well against Dustin in the first round. I think I don't think BSD lost that much that much momentum. I mean, he obviously lost some, but yeah. not. It's still there. Like, there's still heat on him. I am marginally opposed to it because in general, I do feel like if you lose, you should have to defend your position and not get another bite at moving up the ranks, which is I what mean, I, giving BSD. I agree, Fair. but <laughs> but Fazeev's lost two in a row too, so you have to go backwards. Yeah, Fazeev going backwards, I'm I'm fine with it. Uh, I Benoit Saint Denis. Who would I like him to fight? Um, oh, there's a very easy answer. Um, what's Drew Dober doing? Uh, Let those two dudes go hammering tongs on each other. That's not a bad idea either. I mean, that fight's good, guaranteed to be fun as hell. So, <laughs> yeah, that's that's it. Give me Drew Dober. Yeah, that's the I think they could take him down. Drew's not a great defensive wrestler. That could be tough. Yeah, it'd be fun. Maybe. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> I know uh, we have other super chests to get to. I know we do. We have not. Yeah. I see them flying in. I love it. Uh, Jameek, do you think Gon turned down Pavlovich? Jameek. Okay, so this is okay. This this seems like a good opportunity to bring this whole thing up because, golly, man, the amount of DMs I got at like twelve thirty a.m. Eastern time, <laughs> because I shouldn't have been awake at this time, but I, it's just how I am when there's a big project dropping the next day. I don't sleep very well. I get anxious thinking about it. So I maybe took like an hour nap and then woke up and saw all this news. But man, the amount of DMs that I got. You guys are bullshit. You're fake news, all this stuff, because <laughs> we had reported maybe two days prior. I think month. No, it was Tuesday. It was literally the day before. We reported that Alexander Volkov was fighting Jailton Almeida at UFC 302. And the amount of DMs I got saying that we are fake news and all this shit, Dana was right about you, uh, was just eye opening. I was stunned by all of this. I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that fight was 100% real. Uh, we confirmed it with multiple sources. Mm -hmm. That fight was a hundred percent a thing. I had conversations last night after I got those DMs because I wanted to get to the bottom of this. They got the call. Um, I'm told by a member of Jilton Almeida's team. They got the call a few hours before Dana made the announcement that they were shifting gears. That fight was going to happen at 302. Saudi wanted a boost. They shifted gears to do this fight, and now Jilton is still going to fight at 302 
We just don't know who he's going to fight. So he's got to remain on the card. I'm hearing a couple of names being thrown out there, but nothing to the point where we can really report anything at this point because it's still kind of fluid. But that fight was 100% real. That was a real fight. And you bet your ass that there we had conversations in our Slack channel. Even though we didn't even report this fight, uh, we just confirmed an initial report that the UFC pulled this off because <laughs> they wanted to spite the media and be like, see, don't listen to those assholes. You hear it from us, then you know it's true. That fight between Almeida and Volkov was a thing. The UFC did contact Jelton's team and said, look, we're going to shift things up a little bit. You're still fighting June 1st. We'll find you somebody. So that's the story on that. So just want to get that out there. But Jed, do you feel like Cyril Gaon was offered this fight with Sergey Pavlovich? He turned it down and then the UFC ended up shifting gears or like, how do you think this all played out? Do you think Gaon was even in play for this fight? I honestly have no idea because I doubt he turned it down. Just why would he, right? Like fighters aren't afraid of other fighters. I don't know why I have to keep saying this like a whole bunch lately. Uh, fighters just don't duck other fighters unless they're named John Jones and they don't want the Tom Aspinall smoke. He's a thousand percent ducking him. This is real. This is not a gimmick. Don't be scared, John. Uh, but other than John Jones, the coward, uh, everybody else is not afraid to fight other professional fighters because that's just how it goes. So I just strongly doubt he would have turned that down for any reason other than like injury or the timeline or not being ready. Um, because he also like has a pretty good chance to beat him too. Other than the fact that all fighters are psychopaths and think that they can defeat anyone that has ever walked the earth in a fist fight, regardless of logic, reason, or size. Like, Cyril Gaon has to look at Pavlovich and be like, okay, he does two things. And I just have to not get hit by the one thing. That's all I got to do. And that's hard, but otherwise I can do my Cyril Gaon -y things. Uh, so I just strongly doubt that he ducked this for any reasons that wouldn't be like, oh, I'm, I'm a little injured or timeline doesn't fit for me or whatever it is. Or the fact that after he beat Sergei Spivak, he delivered a couple of weeks worth of just maybe the worst strategic moves when it comes to getting yourself in position for something big. Because after he beat Spivak, him calling out Sergei Pavlovich would have been perfect. And in fact, True. had he done that, had he done that, he would probably have gotten the fight with Pavlovich at Madison Square Garden. There is a chance that happens. If he comes out on that microphone and says, Sergey Pavlovich, you're next. Let's fight. Winner gets a title shot. Instead of saying, no, I'm not fighting him. No, I'm not fighting this guy because that would be fighting backwards and no other fight makes sense for me except fighting for the title. Because he did the same with Tom Aspinall as well and no sold him too. And boy, I think this, is, this bit him on the ass real bad the way that he handled himself after that. And even going in the MAR and did the same thing, like still didn't have a name said, Nope. The only thing that makes sense is a title fight. I think he bundled this so badly and I don't know if it's a punishment, but I don't think they're going to give gone that kind of a fight right now, unless they're oh. going to give him a, a Tommy Aspinall now, but I don't know. Nobody. Here's what's going to happen. Because he did he did bungle this real bad. Uh, and that's the other reason that he's not ducking Pavlovich. Because he has to be able to see what is happening. If he's turn if this is you know, offered and he turned this down for any reason, the UFC are petty. And mm -hmm. uh, instead of fighting Sergey Pavlovich, a man who he has a decent shot to beat, though he could get knocked out, certainly. Uh, he's getting jailed in Almeida next. Like that's just gonna happen. Uh, and I got to tell you, if you saw, you know, Cyril Gon's takedown defense and you've ever watched any of jail to now made a fight, I think we can all surmise how that fight is likely to go. So if he was ducking him again, I don't think that's true. This is, he ducked right down into a flying knee. He been asking the shit out of himself. If he was ducking. What do you think about this, Casey? Oh, I actually um I think what uh I think the UFC is petty. I think I think for some reason maybe reasons we don't even know about, they do not like Gone right now. Uh 
And uh, they they yeah. loved him when he was the guy who was going to beat Francis when Francis wouldn't resign. Yeah, how <laughs> I, how fate changes, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got yeah, gone gone Almeida sounds like the way they're going to go. Uh, and I have no reason to believe Ghana would turn down Pavlovich. That that just doesn't make sense. I just and like 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 Jed said, I, these guys aren't afraid. It's just if they're afraid only unless they're John Jones. Sense. Yeah, unless they're John Jones, of course. Um, unless the fight just doesn't make sense, but Gone Pavlovich makes sense. Um, so yeah, Gone. It's gonna be Gone Almeida, which is which is which I like, which I like. I I, I like style clashes. And uh, let's and Gon got to prove himself against a high level grappler, so uh, we're gonna see it. I hope, I hope we see it. I kind of forgot about Sure Gone honestly. When I saw this, when I saw this, I was like, I was like, I was like, and it's like it's been. He's like, so he fought. He fought September second, and there's nothing on the books for him right now. So, yeah, and no injury, right? He's just gone. Just hasn't been booked, right? Is it yeah, as far as we know? My knowledge, which is wild. Which is why we have every freaking heavyweight on every card on every Apex card, but we can't get Surreal Gone in the cage for some unknown reason. You going to get Rebellus if Rebellus yeah. goes in there and does work against WCA in St. I mean, that would be super fun, but gone. also insane matchmaking. <laughs> <laughs> would be categorically insane. Hey, dude with five total fights <laughs> and two wins in the UFC, fight the number two dude. Okay. I dude, I at the death touch. Nuts. I like it. I like it. I don't, I like it. <laughs> wait, wait. I, I I like I like I like the craziness of it. I'm I don't care. I don't care. You got to give Rebellis Jarzino and then somebody else. Jarzino makes more sense. Jarzino right. does more sense. Fire him right in. God. But 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 whatever. I also whatever. Also. Oh my god. That would be funny as hell. It would be so outlandish that I'd be okay with it. Exactly. <laughs> like, this is ridiculous. Okay, like, fine. Like, like, it's almost to the point where, like, a commission should even sanction this fight. I love it. <laughs> I love it so much. <laughs> I love it. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, uh, super chat from Kenny. Thank you, Kenny. Odd to announce Bobby in Saudi and then an Australian pay-per-view. Kind of goes back, back to the point, eh? Of none of that really matters where these guys fight. So, yeah, what do you think of that? Uh, they're going to to Perth two months later, but I'm sure Whitaker was offered this. I'm sure Whitaker was aware that they were going to Perth, but perhaps the opportunity to fight Shemayev was just too big to to pass up, Jed. Um, like a, it's like a little bit strange, but it's not because the, there are two half, like it's it, the two halves to the fight. Yes. Whitaker being in Perth would make sense, but I think just pretty transparently, Hey, Rob, you want to fight in the main event against Hamzat in what is almost certainly a title eliminator, or do you want to fight? I would guess the co-main event though. I guess there's possibility for the feature fight. Um, that Perth card still largely is all rumor, but. Would not at all surprise me if that's DDP Izzy and then they even tack in uh, Volk Taporia 2. Like and just say YOLO, do that. Um, so you do you rock that, and then if that's happened, then you're the feature fight against whoever it ends up being, you know, Sean Strickland, whoever you can get. It wouldn't be Hamza. Hamza's fighting in Saudi, and you're the feature fight, and that feature fight's not for a title shot. Like it's this is a pretty clear path for Rob would be like, yeah, obviously option A is better for me. It would be cool if the whole universe worked out, uh, but that's just not where he is career-wise right now. Can I, can I just say something? I have – I mean, obviously I want to see DDP versus Izzy. I think Perth is a terrible place to have that fight. Like why? Just do Volk versus Taporia too. Make that the main event. I know it's a little soon and some people would be kind of up in arms about it. But why? First of all, Israel Adesanya is from New Zealand. We saw what happened when he fought Sean. It's Strickland. all the same. Nobody yeah. place. If yeah, you've never it, seen a globe, it, it's all the same. Right. But there is a. But just because somebody lives close to your area doesn't mean that that area likes the other area. Close is also a very relative term geographically. Do people know yeah. how far Perth is away from 
say Sydney yes. or Melbourne. Like I don't think people. I don't think our. It's incredibly far. It's like it's like we have, you have UFC has a, a pay per view in Los Angeles. Well, we gotta get a lot of New Yorkers on the card. That's a, that's how far yeah. away it is. Dude, why and why would DDP even want to go to Australia? Like DDP to me seems like a guy that's just like nah, not doing it because it's dumb. So why would he go there? to Australia to fight Israel Adesanya, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Like that fight does better in Las Vegas than it does in Perth, in my opinion. Or just like hold out for South Africa. Like who gives a shit? Like literally anywhere else. Anywhere else Zealand. I think it's fine. It's just, it's just I don't think to, there's any so, rush. Go to, yes, go to New Zealand. New Zealand. Go to New Zealand. <laughs> go to New Zealand. <laughs> so we're clear because I just Googled this because I thought that this was right, but I want to make sure. Uh, would you care to guess how long of a flight time it is from Perth to Auckland? Five eight hours. hours. Yeah, seven, eight seven, hours? Seven. An eight hour flight time. It's the okay. same as so just, it's the same as being like, Hey Jed, you should fight in Russia <laughs> or whatever. You should <laughs> fight in Sweden, Jed, because they're close. No, no, they're not. See, it makes no sense. It makes no sense to do it there. I see so many people on Twitter like, oh, they, there's no other fight you can make. Yes, there is a guy who's actually from Australia being in the main event. And Tapori would do it because he just seems like he's that dude and just wants to get Volkanovski behind him forever so they can go to Spain. But it doesn't seem like they're going to Spain like anytime soon, at least at anything that I've heard at this point. It's going to probably take some time to, no, to get over no there. There's no chance they're getting to Spain to this, this year. Zero yeah. chance. Yeah. I, they I mean, if they African do fine, champions that couldn't do a pay-per-view in Africa. They're not getting to Spain in one year. I think they're fine with Volk in the main event. I have, a, I, have a, I have a question because I, I've always had this question about actually like booking fighters near where they're from, especially with the UFC. If the UFC is so big, does it matter that they, like you, you have a card in Australia, you need Australian fighters? Like, why does that matter? I to me, as I know, and I'm just only speaking for myself, but like if I if if UFC is in LA, I don't need to see fighters who are from LA. I want to see fighters who. There's no chance I'm going to see like bring bring I don't know fighters from China bring high level fighter bring Pavlovich or something like bring fighters who aren't who aren't don't normally fight here, you know what I'm trying to say like why why do we why it's why is basis. it it's so it's so, so like so for some fight like for big stars it's not going to matter Connor has fans everywhere you take him anywhere they're going to be fans there but particularly as you get down the like the main events probably have fans and the UFC certainly has fans, but it does make more sense to have a French crowd and be like, Oh, I don't, I, I am an MMA. I'm not an MMA fan. I am at an event and I maybe casually consume MMA. I am going to this French fight card because Cedric Dumbay is in the main event and I know him and that's awesome. And then for the 12 fights leading up to it, there's a dude rocking a French flag. Hell yeah. I will die for that man while I pound this beer. Like it's, I, it's exactly that you have to do it. It's so much better to do it that way. Unless you're going to do a UFC 300 style thing where you're going to bring all of the super popular people to an, like a location, like the WWE traveling roadshow, basically. I guess that's what I'm kind of thinking about. Like how pro wrestling tours, it's not like, Oh, we have local pro wrestlers coming to your, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. they do, uh, don't they? Isn't that like what jobbers are? Aren't they like local talent that they bring yeah, you in don't, to lose to people? You don't buy tickets for the jobber. That's what I'm saying. Um, yeah. and, and I, I'm not saying I'm not. I'm just more asking the question because I never really quite got that kind of fandom. But I under, I understand why they do. I'm just kind of interested if the U, if the UFC is so big, can it be bigger than selling? You know, oh, they don't have to. Yeah. They absolutely don't have to do it. It's just a it's low hanging fruit. Plus, yeah. also, Casey, you're forgetting the most pro, honestly probably factors more into the UFC's standing. Uh, if you have to buy a bunch of tickets for fighters from Perth to Vegas in that twenty hour flight, those are like three thousand dollar plane tickets that you have to. If you got to buy them from you know Perth to Melbourne, that's a substantially cheaper plane flight. So you're cutting costs down with that too, Casey. Don't forget. This is true. This is true. And, and Perth paying for two events, which also helps paying the site fees. They get a, a multi-year event, a multi-year well, deal. So they'll do a, a card this year and a card next year. 
So yeah. that always helps as well. Yeah, the if Oscar I guy. lived in a city that paid for events, like I would be living yeah, with my local representation. Like in the same way that like, and you know, if you're not an American viewer, this will probably not mean much to you. Like I would lose my mind if I like, oh, we're going to, we're going to pay for this billion dollar at like stadium for this pro football team. Like, fuck, fuck. No, I'm not. That's nonsense. Oh, we're going to spend millions to get the UFC here. Why? Who gives a shit? They can come or they can not. We don't need to pay for them to come. Be fine. Like, I would be. Uh, up in arms if I lived in Salt Lake City. Oh, I 1000% agree. With my that. tax dollars are going to bring this shit here. Yeah. My tax dollars need to fix the roads and feed I mean, the homeless. Yeah. Yeah. Unless it's like free tickets for the local community or something or whatever. But no, 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 no. Yeah. But that's a whole nother giant can of worms. Jin but, Chewy, you're absolutely incorrect. UFC does pay for flights. They have to pay for travel for fighters, and I, I think their their protocol is two two team members. It's yeah, it's pretty like low. It's pretty low. It's yeah, not, they they don't do the full team, but their protocol, like they one, you have to pay for the flight of the fighter to get there. <laughs> that would be dumb, and I believe their protocol is two uh, is is two on top. Two I know a lot of times it's only one hotel room. Uh, I think I think. Uh, I, it could it could change. I know it, it's it's changed recently, but it used to be just only one hotel room, and so they pay for the fight flight, but then the other fighter has to pay for a hotel for their corners. Mm -hmm. So that's why oh, you yeah. see when you, when you watch these like little video blogs, they go, "Oh, why this fighter is on the main card, and yet six people are staying in his hotel room because of reasons like that." And usually it's mm -hmm. near the fighter hotel. So it's, yeah, yeah, and the and the hotels are crazy expensive that week, so it's a yeah, yeah. That's a whole that's a whole other. <laughs> mess big mess thank you much kenny oh you're gonna you're gonna love this question i'm very excited for this one thanks kenny michael Mike. is middleweight the best division for 2024 i can't see any other division coming close to the matches stories and stakes what do you think uh i mean if if you want really the true answer to this we battled this out quite a bit on one of the ranking shows not that long ago after ddp i think it was jen the first one of the year after DDP won the belt and we were talking about Sounds how right. good middleweight is. It's great. This is good. It's going to be the money division for the UFC this year. In my opinion, it's going to be the money division. DDP is, he's going to be huge. Three main Whoever events already. That. Yep. Plus Alan Curtis two on the books plus Rob, uh, Chimaev. So five main events, uh, it's like a pretty high number for thing. Yeah. Top of the division is very interesting. There are some very middle fights. having a good year. Yeah. It is not yeah, the best division. There are some fights. But the UFC yeah. has fallen into some great storylines in the middleweight division, yep. and that's what matters. That's One what matters. Yep. The middleweight division has characters and has storylines, and that's why uh, it, you could call it the best division in that sense. Yes. I would agree. My answer is always going to be lightweight for all of these things, and also like. Yes, there are more main events, but uh, I don't know. We just got Poirier BSD. We're about to get Gaethje Holloway and Sarukian Oliveira, and then Islam's going to defend. Like, give me that over all this middleweight nonsense. Those oh, fights yeah. are all Light insane. Dude, lightweight's the best division. It's not even, like, it, this is yeah. a conversation, but middleweight is going to be like I'm their also money. just saying. Middleweight's the money division this year. I also yeah. just think lightweight is delivering, like, things that I care about more outside of, you know, I, I get the argument and I'm not opposed to middleweight. Like it's having a moment, but, uh, I, I think we just perpetually underrate how sick lightweight is because it's been incredible for 10 years. <laughs> and it's just like, yeah. Oh, it's the same way that like LeBron wasn't MVP every season of basketball for 12 straight years. Like, yeah, whatever. Or like that year they gave Charles Barkley the MVP over Michael Jordan. It's like, he's won it too much. We got to focus on the other things. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's, like, it's like when they eventually are going to start giving the MMA the MMA Journalist of the Year award to like Mike Heck instead yeah. of Ariel. Just because we're tired I, of it. <laughs> I got to say, nobody talks enough. Nobody talks enough about Ariel's ability. He, he is so dominant that he is blown past that because that happens in every sport in every sport they're just like oh whatever like we all know patrick mahomes is the goat 
but it's fine. Like he doesn't need to, Lamar can win MVP. <laughs> Happens in every sport. Ariel's just got a stranglehold on that motherfucker. Just nope, not giving enough for anyone. It's great. I, I, <laughs> if that ha- if that happened, and I'm like, like I sat there in the awards, <laughs> and they called my name, I'd literally be like, what? I'd be like. <laughs> <laughs> well, if be- Charles Barkley was MVP, you could be MVP, Mike. <laughs> oh my God. It just like wouldn't even feel right. It would be <laughs> who was who was who was the fighter earlier this year that thought he won? Even though they didn't clearly didn't announce his name. Oh, oh was it, was it um, Feely? It wasn't Feely, right? No, no. No, because there, no. there was a there was are you, there was oh, a no. women's fight who it was a women's who fight. Was. Oh no, no, Dern, Dern, Mackenzie Dern. Mackenzie right. Dern. Yeah, but there was another one. There was There's another no. one too. Oh. But they, they actually misspoke on the other one, I think. Oh, no, no. It, the name sounded alike. That's what it was. Ah, in the comments. He went over and he was like so happy and he was going over to do the interview. And then like the cut, I think it was, it, was a DC who was like, nah, man, oh, he you didn't knew. actually win. I forget what it was. It was a fight night card on the road. Yeah, someone, I remember. Someone in the chat will figure it out. But that's how it would feel. I'd be like, this isn't right. It would even, it'd just be wild. Yeah, Mackenzie Dern did also thought she heard her name too, but she admits she was just concussed. <laughs> was Charles like, oh. Jordan, yeah. chat, chat saying Charles Jordan. It was Jordan. I it thought Jordan. it was Charles Jordan. Yeah, I, I was it's, like, it's a Canadian fighter. Was Jordan, Jordan was the first name that popped into my mind, but I wasn't sure. It was Jordan, and I can't remember that whose opponent was, but the name when you kind of yell Woodson. it, Sean Woodson. Woodson, Sean Woodson. That's what it was. Yeah, yep. Woodson Jordan. Yeah, so in a big arena, echoey, it sounded like his name, and the fight was relatively close. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Also, I, I do just want to say time. no disrespect to Charles Barkley. The round mound to rebound can hoop, um, but it is it, it, it fit my purpose too. So sorry, Charles. <laughs> okay. All right, thank thank you much. Thank you much. Uh, we got lots of super chats. Let's fly through these. Uh, you guys rule. Jay Fish, what's next for Kamara? Jay Fish, so, later back to welterweight. So I suggested this this morning, Jed, on heck of a morning. And I'm going to bring mm-hmm. up the name that that Tease you say me. shall not be mentioned in the middleweight conversation. Don't, what about don't say it. Versus, what about Kamara versus uh, versus JC Jared Cannonier? Don't say it. Just stop. Oh, stop saying his name. He'll show away. up and then <laughs> be around. Uh, <laughs> Is sure. Cannonier a like candy man? What are you talking? <laughs> I don't know. I just he. <laughs> He was doing that thing where he was like kind of around the title picture when no one wanted him to be. And then he had one of the worst title fights, not of all time, because I mean, we've had a lot of bad ones, but a very bad title fight. And then it's just like, oh, but he's kind of still in play. And it was just like, what if we all just forget about him (laughs) and he just goes away? He's part of this old poopy part of the middleweight division. It's not part of this fun rising pile of humans. So, uh, Sure, I don't uh, talk about a fight I could not care less about is the only issue there. Um, I would rather us do something more fun with Kamar Usman than that. I think that fight honestly makes a ton of sense promotionally. I don't know that Usman has any interest in going back to welterweight or, or where he's at with that. Usman is in a really tough situation because like, when you are no longer in the title picture at lightweight or featherweight or bantamweight, there are kind of other names or dudes who've been around the block and are just like awesome. Like, hell yeah, let's, let's see those fights happen. Fights just for funsies, you know, the, the legends tour stuff. He doesn't really have that at welterweight. I guess just not a ton and like middleweight with where it's at, like Whitaker would have made sense, but obviously that's no longer in play. So I don't know what you do with them. I'm just going to continue to default to the Steven Wonderboy Thompson fight just because that's a fight that I was always at least partially intrigued by. Uh, And it feels like that's where these two dudes are in their career is they're doing those sorts of things. What if Chris Weidman beats Bruno Silva on Saturday? I'm absolutely in for that. If that's in play, 100% we can do that. I like that so much more than Jared Cannonier. It is not funny. I I think there's lots of fun fights for Kamaru, um, but uh, but Cannonier isn't one of those. Like what? <laughs> get like give give me a oh. fun fight for Kamara that's reasonable. I I'm gonna say it out loud. I I like Kamara versus Strickland. I just think that's a weird fight that makes but, kind but of that's sense. that that's just not reasonable to happen at this juncture. But you you weren't gonna give him Whitaker, right? Whitaker was 
Wait, are we talking? Yeah. I was, I was going to give him Whitaker prior to Whitaker winning his last one. Like now that Whitaker's won and he's moving up, like Strickland's the number one middleweight in the world. He just lost to Hamza. I just, you can't have him fight Sean Strickland right now. I just not really, I, he's on three fight losing streak. You just can't do it. I, I just, I agree. It's a fine matchup, but like, what are, what I, I are the good... matchups that are reasonable to book that are interesting? Usman um, MVP. Yeah. I, I, no, that, 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 was, that was my second suggestion. That was going to be my second suggestion. Yeah. That's the yeah. same thing as the Steven Thompson, but yes, I'm in for yeah. that, but I'm actually super here for Weidman. If Weidman beats Bruno Silva, I think that's quite fun. It's Kamara, on, but you want to, but, but you want to give Kamara the legends tour already, basically, yes, right? Okay, absolutely. That, that, that's kind of the difference. I'm, I'm not quite ready to give Kamara the legends tour, but I think that's what the slight difference is. But I, I see it though. I don't mind. If I'm not, if we're not giving the legends tour, go back to welterweight. You're not a middleweight. If we're giving, if if you're not going to do welterweight, then just fight people that are cool. Like I just. All right. Thank you much. Uh, Thanks, Jay oh, Fish. Uh, this is more of a comment than a question. Oh no, it is a question. Sorry. <laughs> a super, a super comment. Uh, I the demand Idaho. to know where super chat money goes. <laughs> I, hold up I, the Duncan, Mike. Hold up the Duncan. I already drank it. It's in the garbage. Wow, <laughs> that's where it goes. It goes right I'm to my tech's gut health. Yeah, I. Uh, Just, I did buy a second one, so I do have a small one in the fridge. Yeah. It's one of those days yeah. where I need two wow. coffees. So, uh, <laughs> that is crazy, crazy day today. Out. Crazy day. Mr. Mr. Idaho, so you know, my cake right now is on his private yacht in the Mediterranean right now. So oh, that's yeah. where it goes. I Look, Idaho, where it goes is um, we're saving up and we are going to buy a UFC event um, to, to be broadcast <laughs> live on MMAfighting.com. <laughs> <laughs> and they better not give us no Mahai of Alex Perez bullshit in the main event. <laughs> uh, Paul, 300 airs and Paul. an ad for Apex 100. What's the lineup? Now, this is a question. Who headlines Apex 100? Which is what? I so have this is main Next week is 90, right? Next week's 90? Correct. Uh, Who we're has to be on the card, at least? Jorginho has so, to be on the card, right? <laughs> For the longest time, I was of the opinion that it we should just do Holly Holm because she's been doing a lot of Apex work. She feels like she fits the Apex vibe. Um, and I think that, but you still, it is still 100, so you want to elevate. You don't just want to go Jairzinho Rosenstrike versus um, uh, Marcin Tybura. But I think the co-main <laughs> event is Rosenstrike Tybura. Like okay. those two oh, dudes yeah. have been putting in the Apex work. And they deserve the co-main event. Uh, I just don't think they have enough cachet for the main event of an illustrious um, card like that. First of all, they both do uh, in today's UFC. Very possible. But no, I we're, we're elevating Apex 100 above other uh, Apexes. Slightly. The I same way Apex. they do with 100, 200, and 300. This I is feel the like Apex, are, Apex event. Yeah, I think it, you need like all the MVPs. I think I think you have to put Sean Strickland in the main event. I was thinking that I was thinking Strickland too for because he's, he's too big event. now. No, he's too he, big but, now. But he, but he's the, the face of the Apex. He's the he face. Was, once he, he won the event. title, <laughs> once he won the title, he it's the same as with the middleweight belt. When you become fun, you you lose the middleweight middleweight. middleweight I don't think title. he became fun. So I'm Rose Lama Yunus just headlined at the Apex. No, she's no, I was I was saying. That, yeah, that was baffling. I still don't understand what happened. It was a fever dream that we put Rose. <laughs> Strickland winning the belt makes him too popular to put him in the apex. I just, I don't but think we can do it. It's a special event. It's a spe he lost the belt. It's a special event. Now he's back at the apex. He he goes back to where he got his roots from. You know where he yeah, throw shot. Literally throw shot in there with absolutely anybody. Doesn't matter who it is. Could be a freaking mm. Twitch streamer. I don't give a shit. But he need, he's the face of it. He has to do it. Big. He would like do it. No. I like Strickland what if we have Apex Sean Strickland serve as guest referee? Is that oh, like can okay. we do that? Now we're so guest commentator. Now we're like let's get let's get a live mic into Sean Strickland's hands on yeah. ESPN. For, for I six, think hour, that's for six plus hours. Yeah, let's do this. Okay. Sean could be Sean can do the um 
the Megan O'Leary role. I was just saying, Megan O'Leary role. Where she stands she's doing the walk, walk and by her. Yeah. He's doing the walk and talks. And he's just like, he goes, yeah, man. So these two guys are about to fight. What the fuck are you looking at? And it would just be the best. Like, it would just be the best. I think, I think we're, we're on to something. Chris Curtis has to be there. I accept Sean Strickland if he and Chris Curtis are going to fight each other. <laughs> they just do that. <laughs> That would be kind of wild, actually. It would yeah. be fun as hell. I'm Strickland actually Curtis, if it's Strickland Strickland Curtis is Chris the main Curtis. event of you, if you Apex 100. Yes. We're on to something. I'm We're on so to something. in on this stupid ass fight. That is so that stupid. I best. love it. That I kind of think. Uh, I kind of think Kevin Holland was a first team Apex fighter before. Kevin like, Holland, for sure. I think that's the thing. I think Kevin Holland, you can put back in the Apex. It's just hard for me to imagine putting Sean Strickland how over he is and like he's in the prime of his stardom and then just funneling him into a gymnasium. Is Which dumb. makes total sense. So the UFC would totally make that fight. That's how it works. They That's might. That's where his comeback just... began. Remember yeah. Sean's, Sean's first fight back after the injuries and the long layoff at the Apex? He's talking shit. And Holly Holm, Misha Tate Strickland. two is your main event. That, no, I'm, main, no. I'm standing on that business. I don't, I don't like that. Don't like it. We, we were, we were good with Strickland. Now we're, now we're drifting. Now we're drifting. Holly Holm, Misha Tate two. Catlin right, Vieira right probably answer. needs to be on the card somewhere. She's been fighting at the. Oh, yeah. Catlin Vieira I'm sure gets in there. Catlin Vieira versus at Chelsea least Handler. Two heavyweight fights are on this card. <laughs> Jessica Andrade probably finds a spot. She's headlined about 18 Apex cards. Mostly on most of them on short notice. Yeah. Oh, Angela Hill getting in there. Angela Hill, oh, Jessica Andrade, run it, do it again. It's fine. Sure. I'm 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 gonna what throw my teammate on there. I'm gonna throw my teammate on there. Victor Henry, who's on. He's fought for. He's gonna. He has another fight booked to the Apex. <laughs> so he's this both is, Basharats. Yeah, should both, be on yeah. There. We gotta get some contender series prime cuts in here, like some. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Sure. You we're both lacking. Basharats. What'd you say? Both Basharats can fight. Yeah, on uh, both Basharats. Yeah, that's it. We got to give some more contender series fodder in here. But um, look, we're still a ways we're away. Like we don't know what the landscape will look like. But uh, Paul, this is a wonderful oh. question. <laughs> Circle back with us in a little bit. You know, in a few months when we're we're closing in on it, we'll do something. Big. <laughs> Bring back the Dawkins brothers for this card. Love it. I agree. Love it. Also, I can functionally guarantee you when we're at like UFC Apex. 80 or something We're right before we get that fight card like announced a thousand percent mma fighting.com is going to have a round table where it's like fantasy book you'll see apex 100 parker porter great call great call bring them back baby oh yeah you see how you see 100 they should bring it should be like a uh what do you call it like the uh they were, uh, with a uh, tough does when they bring back everyone like bring back all these guys that, that have been released just for ufc 100 <laughs> if, if they idea. wanted to do it right, Apex 100 would be exclusively like women's flyweight fights and heavyweight fights. It would just be just alternating between women's flyweights and heavyweights, or maybe just women's bantamweights. Man, man, I, don't know bantam if no, I don't know. Women's, fly, women's thing, flyweights have graduated. I don't know if they have enough bantamweights on roster to do that. Though. They'll fight twice. <laughs> yeah. No, no, there'll be flyweights not cutting weight, fighting at bantamweight. <laughs> There. Cynthia Calvillo has to be on this card for sure. Bring back Jessica. I, I. <laughs> I want to be dead serious with you before we move on. If the UFC announced an all heavyweight fight card, that would be my Nirvana. That would be my favorite. No, no, at in Salt Lake City. Like, oh, let's Salt just City. do it. All heavyweights, <laughs> Salt Lake City. I would pay 800 American dollars for that fight card. It would be the best. I want to see, like, just for fun, like, what is the worst card UFC could book right now of their roster? Just, just to see. I think it was called UFC Vegas '87. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's get to the Super Jets. Ty Burrow was a real bad fight card, man. Uh, Lazy man, thank you. In a hypothetical Lazy world bad. where Vincenzo Ursa wins the title versus Fantosia. Do we do a quick turnaround first defense as main event for Perth card? Uh, is that even that quick of a turnaround? It's really uh, not May that quick August of a turnaround. Be three, right? months. three months. Yeah, that's actually a fine turn. Uh, 
if Vincenzo wins it for sure, he's, I mean, he's not the main event for the Perth card. He would be the co-main event. The main event is, is either going to be Volk or it's going to be Izzy. That just sort of seems like the writing on the wall. Um, Vincenzo as the new champ, you know, defending against, I assume they'd let Pantoja run it right back, do that in Perth. Um, I think that would make all the sense in the world. I love that Vincenzo is going to gain steam from this. Way to go, guys. Vincenzo. People are like, Steve Ersak, man, who's that? Vincenzo. <laughs> Has it? I, oh, jeez, Vincenzo. I just like saying it now, Vincenzo. So it's a great name. Can't so imagine great. having that as an option and going with Steve. <laughs> Steve. Uh, question for Casey Pop. from Domi Pop 7. E. Casey, do you think you resemble Vince from Hell Pichel, or is it just the mustache? Just I the be, mustache. I think it's just the mustache, but I appreciate it. I Very, see it. I see it. Maybe it's the glasses. On. A slight resemblance. We'll, we'll, we'll do a side by side one day, me and me, me and okay. Mr. Pacheco. Thank you very much, Dreamy uh, Domi Pop Seven. All right, uh, do, do, do. uh Nick Examp ninety five. How big of a super Nick chat Zamp. would it take to battle Jed when an opponent falls out of BTL? Love the Q and A, but battles are the best. Uh, battles are the best when there's actually something to talk about. Turns out there was something to talk about, but. <laughs> You know, we had a battle uh, last week. 300, they'll certainly be a battle. No doubt about that. Uh, kind of have a battle for that. Um, I, we could come up with a number. Yeah. we. I, I'm going to nope. need to see a cut of that number, but we could come up with a number. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, I, we can't need. just all finance Mike and X, Duncan. You know, like, I got to get yeah. I gotta get Duncan too. I like Duncan. Let me get some Duncan, you know? I mean, and just just remember, guys. I am a rewards member as well, so mm. not every dollar goes to this. I or I accumulate enough points to get a free coffee once a week, so no nice. worries there. Do you do do you, do you sometimes go and you forget your little punch card and you have like six punch cards with like eight holes in it, and you're like, oh, you're, nah, you're consistent, you know? Ah, technology is the best. Oh, technology is no. the best. I wake up, I get my kid breakfast, I get ready. And then while my kid's eating breakfast and my wife's getting ready, I go to Dunkin' Donuts and get the coffees. I come home and then I drive my kid to school and then I go to the gym and I order on the way. So all I have to do is do it on the phone, pull in, walk in. They already know, hey, Mike, how's it going? Coffee's right there. Grab it, put the straws no, in, get back know, in the car and drive. They, they know, know you. The they, they, they know, know you. There's, I'm there every day. Oh, I, there's since I moved nothing here, better every day that I've been here, business every day you. that I've <laughs> Every morning that I've woken up in Bluffton, South Carolina, I've gone to Dunkin' Donuts. Every one. Wow. Every morning. There is, I mean, it's really the best when you are a regular and you get the the cheers treatment. It's just norm. It hits. Yeah. It hits so different. It's just the best. I have two places in town that's that, and it's ah, uh, they're my favorite. Like they were already were my favorite places, which is why I went to them as frequently as I did. But if you just did that the first time I ever walked in and you somehow knew it, I'd be like, I'm a fan for life. It's the best feeling in the world. That's, I got a couple we got a couple places around here when me and Esther walk in. They, they don't yell our name out, but they like we stick out, I think. <laughs> they, they go, oh, hey, what's up? So, hey, guys. It's, it, it's a good Here's feeling. A prime table for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Skip all the resmos. They know, they, they, know, know, they, know our, they know our order and everything is pretty good. I like it. <laughs> We're so we're, we're so Asian. Those places are um are bo are are boba places. You have you have a boba shop in South Carolina or Atlanta? You know, bo 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 uh, bubble we, tea. We have yes, boba. we have boba. Here. Uh, I don't actually have one that close to me. I'm trying to think how far away I got because I, I live in a place where I can walk to like everything. Yeah. Um, I don't have a one that's walking distance around, but I I have about fifteen of them within walking distance of me. <laughs> Wow, 15, LA at least 15. Just, <laughs> LA doing different it different. World. Different, different world, world yeah. <laughs> Thank you Thank very much. Nick. Mark, Volk to Poria 2 at 305 is fine. Volk wins, Trilogy in Spain. Taporia wins, can fight someone else in Spain. They're good for Spain 2025 either way. Yep, I'm fine with that as well. Mark nailed it. I mean, yep, yeah. That's it. They're just not going to Spain this year. And so, yeah. and 
again, I hate immediate rematches. We know this. Uh, if you're going to give one, Volk is obviously a dude who is deserving of one. And honestly, he's deserving of getting to do it, you know, in home territory um, in, in that respect. So, yeah, I think Mark's on it all the way. Yep. Agreed. Yeah, that'd be, it's just, it, it makes sense, but it's just wild to get an immediate rematch after, I know it's two different people, but two bad knockouts. So, but it yeah. makes sense, but it's weird also. I don't like it, but it, does. it also makes sense. I hate it, but yes. I mean, you know, it's, yeah. a weird, it's a weird, it's weird. Yeah, it's a special situation. If, Yai, if I mean, look, if Yaya Rodriguez won, they would have probably gone to that fight somehow, some way, because mm -hmm. of the heat that's been. And I just don't know if they'll give it to yeah. Ortega right now. I I wish it was Ortega. I don't I don't care about the heat. I think Ortega brings enough, but whatever. They're gonna. I think the they're only gonna, way this. The only way this doesn't happen at three oh five is if Volk says he's not ready on the timeline. I think that this actually lines up about cr properly with sort of what he has suggested for this year. Six but months. Yeah. Um, so it would be okay as he gets some time off. But if he rethinks, he says, actually, I'd like to take a little more time off. Um, then I don't think they're going to bring Ilya to Perth to fight random body, you know, but uh, I, it makes way too much sense for that fight to go to Perth. Yep. One of the big reasons why I don't want to see this fight is like I feel Topor Toporia might run into the same situation that Volk had, where all his title defenses are going to be against the same person almost. Like if nah. if, Vol if, Vol if Volk has a competitive fight against Toporia, and then Volk gets one more win, we're going to demand another. We're going to demand a trilogy, and then and like we're maybe. all maybe. I don't know. I okay, if, if I, Tupuria, okay, if I Volk think loses this is just less rematch, likely. No matter if Volk loses the rematch, no matter how he loses. Is he completely never going to fight Tapuria again, ever, ever? Even if it's a I would close. Say yeah, I I would say yes, mainly because if and when he loses, it'll be the same way the first one happens. Like he's just gonna get like if if Volk had like blown the doors off Max, then it wouldn't have been like we gotta have Max. But they were competitive, fun fights, and Max kept winning. Like Ilya obliterated. <laughs> him and i suspect we'll do so again but if he doesn't and it's a competitive one maybe we get a third but that will be the end of it right I, it'll just be three yeah. and that sucks i never want that but i, I don't think it's going to be this like same situation where max still has just around the title and like are we going to do max volk four I, I don't think that will ever be a conversation yeah. here I, and i guess too i i don't i don't want to see the same situation happen where volk becomes the new holloway in the sense that they're just going to – you have to beat Volk if you want to buy Topuria type of thing. You know, yeah, so. dude, if, if I don't care how Volk loses, if he loses the rematch, which I believe he will, uh, go to lightweight, homie. Yeah, like, yeah cut, exactly. Cut less, weight, the same thing. cut less weight, and there are a bunch of sick-ass fights. To my previous point in this show, there are a ton of dope legends fights. I Sign me up today, tomorrow, and for the rest of eternity for Volk Gaethje <laughs> – uh Volk Volk, DP, Volk BSD Volk any of the like just do it Oliveira just, baby put it Oliveira I, put I it in my veins now I was asking for him to bail on featherweight a year ago because I didn't care like I don't care like these other fights I, I cared about to some extent was like no the answer is always going to be fight the dope people and all the dope people are lightweight <laughs> now all, all I want to see just for the visual I want to see Volk versus Jalen Turner I just want to see. I mean, oh my god, dude! That would be tough. But like Volk Oliveira is a deeply fascinating fight to me. Like a deeply fascinating fight to me. Uh, I would love to see that fight. So you fight Taporia, you get gassed up again. Uh, just bail and go to 155 and have some fun fights with some dudes because that would be sick. I don't think Volk's that guy who just bail. I think he's like, I can do it. I can do it. That's, if he gets but, if he gets stretchered again, I don't think he can convince himself he can do it. Well, he can. Fighters are crazy. That's fair. But that, that's hopefully awesome. somebody will be like, dude, just cut less weight and go chase money fights. Because if you stick around here, they're going to make you money. fight chase Arnold Allen. Chase the money, Volk. Chase the money. That's all. Yeah, chase they're the going to make Volk. you fight Arnold Allen. And while I would love to watch Volk fight Arnold Allen, I'm one of 12 people that would love to watch that's not that. The, that's not the um, money fight. Yeah. Right. yeah. Volk versus Poirier is terrific. And everyone wants to be part of that. All right. Thank you much. Uh, I got a few more. Let's go through these. 
Giovanni, guys, Walter Wade is the greatest and most consistent all time. No, starting with the Matt Hughes era. Uh, it's never been weak, and to this day, it's pretty stacked, in my opinion. Walter Wade is not better than Lightweight. I'm sorry. This is not. But consi I, is consistent. Has it, has it been consistent? No. no, Walter Wood has been a deeply consistent weight class. Um, and there's an argument that historically all time it's better because there wasn't a lightweight. Like welterweight has been there almost since the inception of like mixed martial arts as an entity. Um, and it has always, I mean, you uh you went Militich uh into Hughes functionally, um, into GSP. BJ popped in there for a moment, but you're into GSP. Uh Woodley, Robbie Law, Robbie oh, Lawler, Robbie. then to Woodley, um, and then you're you know here where we're at, Sorry. Usman and to Edwards. Like it's the the list of welterweight champions is truly astonishing, and so I, I get what you're driving at, Giovanni, and I, I don't think it's wrong necessarily. I do think lightweight is just a better weight class and has been uh, equally as good for as long as it has been in existence i would say that one of the arguments against it um is that it hasn't had it doesn't have the same level of champion right which i i put down to it's just a more competitive weight class it's hard to have a long like nobody reigns more than three fights at lightweight because it's a freaking shark tank um but I, I get where you're coming like what you're arguing or saying and it's not wrong I think there's a legitimate thing. case that Kamar Usman is the third best welterweight of all time. And like considering the accomplishment Kamaru has, that's pretty wild. In that sense, yes. But like he's yeah, I would say Kamar Usman's undoubtedly like a, one a year of the top away. fifteen fighter all time. Yeah. Welterweight's a year and, away from being super interesting. like really interesting. Like once yeah, the and, older guard is out. Like like lightweight had it took lightweight a while, and we're still not even over. Dustin Pori is probably about to get a title shot, which I'm cool with. Like, but we're starting to make some movements here. We're starting to see the older guard, title challenger, former champions fight the younger, hungry fighters. Walterweight needs that so badly. Needs that so badly. We're just not getting it. Colby getting a title shot last year pissed a lot of people off. Colby getting the rematch with Usman at the time pissed a lot of people off. It's just yeah, one of those tough. things where Masvidal getting a rematch is also very dumb. Yeah, that whole thing. So welterweight had a pretty tough like last year and a half, I guess two years. Yeah, whatever but that time that's period. two or three years. It sucks because that's on the UFC to me. That's not I mean not on the actual fighters. Yeah, I don't but know that's if that makes sense. that's how but, was, that's how we view things historically. Yeah, I know that's how we view too, things. But so the UFC itself has kind of shot itself in the foot as far as the welterweight division keeping yeah. it great. I mean, look look at it right now. Well, it shot itself in the Gary's pool with the lightweight in. division by burning it down. Well, that, no yeah, that, and, and that and that's why that's why I think Walter White was considered the marquee division because they they shot themselves in the foot with the lightweight division when they had it, you know. Agreed. Yeah. BJ beat Uno. I can't believe that was a draw. It's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Just go watch that fight. It's fucking ridiculous that I was scored a draw. Like I don't this is not a world. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, Chase, what's up from Omaha? Does Lionheart beat Chase. Vitor Petrino? No. Eh, probably not. He could, I guess. Weird fight for... <laughs> Watching your brain work through that whole thing was the best. So. <laughs> well, Vitor Petrino's not, like, great. Like, he's fine. I, In my head, Anthony Smith is more washed than I think maybe he actually is, if that makes sense. Because, like, I was just very convinced that he was all the way washed. And then who did he fight most recently? He, this is up. He just went. He beat yeah, Ryan Spann, but he fought. Right, he, he beat Ryan Um, And then he fought Cleo Roundtree, and he ended up getting knocked out. But that was in a fight where he was, like, looking more competitive and spry. And so I was like, maybe he's not as washed as I think. I do think he probably gets knocked out. Um, But, again, Vito Petrino is – fun like I, I enjoy Vito Petrino I'm not sure like he just went to a UD with Tyson Pedro I don't think the man's good because it's tight it's the retirement fight of Tyson Pedro and that's you know where we're at and that wasn't a uh a thrilling affair 
I want to be real clear. UFC 301 is not going on the Mashulin star scoring system. It's going on the fart scoring system. Wow. <laughs> and Chino getting a fart. Is I got to tell you, fart? UFC 301 might do worse than UFC Saudi on the fart scoring system. Wait, what are you paying 80 bucks for too? Yeah. Man, Machino's a, a fart, right? A lot right? of Machino's... people aren't paying 80 bucks for that one. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. All right, and this is our final question. All right. It's a good one. Not really. Shout out to all of you. You guys rule. Can you curse on Super Chat questions? Hell yeah, Mr. Senor Pepe. I mean, you let's, have go some, let's have a little bit of decorum. A little bit. I don't know if you go if you go if you go ten ninety nine maybe I I let you throw. Uh, you can use the words that you would like to use, but it, it's you know the the level of them depends on how much money you give us, right? Like I'll let you drop a a, a straight <laughs> f bomb for a for ten spot, um, but if if you're trying to be PG, uh, just two bucks is fine, you know. Yeah, Actually, if you I, could I, say I, it on. F- if you could say it on FX, you could say it in the super chat. If you can't, probably shouldn't say it. Yeah, I'm not sure probably. actually because we have we have you know we have some filters on, though to, to, to keep the bad people out. But I don't know if that applies to super chats actually. So I would learn and guess it doesn't, but don't only one sure. way to find out. <laughs> Someone super chat in with words and see what happens. <laughs> Again, only a lot oh. of money for them because yeah, yeah. we are we're for the children. We're for the children. Uh, and your next opportunity, your next opportunity to test that theory will be tomorrow at one p.m. Eastern for our UFC Atlantic City preview show. Yes, I find it be- deeply amusing. We got zero questions about the fight card. Oh, we I'm didn't. Yeah, you're right. We didn't get one. I'm not surprised. But deeply amusing. As you can see, 4.5 farts. Um, this is, I, I think we've determined that this is a slightly above average apex score. I think we the apex fart score is probably around a three and a half. So this is slightly above your average apex card. I want you know we're gonna get, we're gonna have one question, one non super chat question about tomorrow's card because I actually want to talk about this fight but real quick. I respect it. Uh, Ginger of a loopy is happening this week. Considering we don't know the status of Tatiana Suarez, is there a chance a title shot could be on the line? No. Not no, a no, title no. shot. Uh, I don't, honestly, yeah. I actually think that that's real. I think you're insane. Who else is fighting right now? Like, if, if Suarez is gone, gone, right? Like, are you doing Zhang Wali? Well, guys, Zhang is Ginger fighting at 300. Spot. She fights once every nine months. So it's not like sure, she's fighting. But three ma- times maybe a year. she's trying to be more active. I don't know. Um, and if Yon, if Yon, I don't Yon think Yon this win? is insane. I actively do not it's think this is insane. Off. I mean, because Amanda Limos just lost to Wiley, so like they're not going to run that right back. Virna is number five in the UFC's rankings, so the people in front of her are Jan, who's about to fight for it, Tatiana Suarez, who don't really know what was doing limo who just fought for it and jessica and and i got josh obviously has the name etc i don't know man like she beat mckinsey it would Dern depend and done anything if if marina rodriguez wins big maybe i i actually i had not considered this at all legitimately i think there's a there's this is a real thing this is possible I- I say no. The winner will be on like a I Jennifer was on I think three fights in a row. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's only two, but yeah. would be on three. Two. And Loopy is, yeah. you know, people three. are pumped on on Loopy Godinez. Yeah. She's got three or four in a row, and obviously this is her a big step up in competition. Yeah. But it's a top five win. She would be a top five opponent. Somebody new with a little bit of pizzazz to her. Like I don't think I like, this is crazy. I don't think it's crazy. It would like be one. It would be one trillion percent dependent on Zhang Wei Li and nobody else. Oh, for sure. Like nobody else. Now these women will have yeah. a say in it. If Yan wins, yeah. are they doing a rematch with Wei Li? hundred percent. Probably. Okay. Almost I'll certainly. Theoretically, they would also time, actually this do time it in China. Do it in China. Yeah. Um, I still, 
And I was talking about the earlier talking about like putting fighters where they're from and then Wei Li Yan in Vegas and not China. The card they had only a couple months before. Yeah, whatever. That's a whole nother thing. I oh, think on Ver I think Verna will have a better case because of the ranking. Not that I'm against Loopy. Um Loopy would have the Loopy. ranking though. I agree. If, but if she Loopy doesn't wins, have like she'll that. To, she'll be top five. Yeah, but I think she needs like I don't know. I think she needs another. I think she needs like a name. Like not saying Vern is, like Vern is very good, but I think mm -hmm. she would need a name. If she wins, you know, you know what? Even if Janjaroba wins, because I'm sure Janjaroba would be just fine with this. Winner gets Mackenzie Dern. Mackenzie is still a name. Yes, she's lost two in a row. But Mackenzie is still a name. And if, I, I, I think, I just winner, don't I think winner gets Amanda Limosh. Yeah, maybe. Because maybe. that's, that that's at least fighting up. And I, I agree that I think that's more likely. I'm just saying I would, I would have scoffed this off as lunacy until I just actually thought about it and was like, Oh my God, this is, this is the state of the strawweight division <laughs> right now. And I, I like both the fighters. I think it's a good fight, but like, it is really weird, but they are, they, there's no juice in this weight class anymore. Yeah, just again, Drogh just had such a bad up and down run the last little bit. Rose is bailed. Yoan is gone. Like the the reinforcements are slow, if coming at all. Karolina Kovalkiewicz is still holding a ranking. Like there's no juice in women's straw weight right now. And so you yeah, we might be in a world where Lupi Godinez gets a win, can cut some sort of a promo, gets slotted in there. It's wild how well, flyweight run. But the, but the title thing is all messed up at flyweight too. Like, man, all yeah. the women, all the women's divisions right now are kind of. A they mess. will they will yeah. wait they will wait as long as possible for Tatiana Suarez to come back. Yeah, probably to a certain degree. But like, they'll I wait think nine months to a year for Tatiana before. In my it. head, strawweight was better because it was like, oh, Tatiana's coming. She's not crowned yet. She's gonna get there. And then when she's out of the picture of the injury again, I'm just like, oh, actually, hoof. This weight class could use some pizzazz to it. Oh, you know what? I will, I will, I will, I will add a couple of percentage points to this, but under one condition. Zhang Wei Li goes out and wins and says, "Hey Dana, I want to fight at the Sphere on that card." Oh, Lupi Godinez wins. This could be a fight for the Sphere. Lupi, yeah, I could make Mexican a lot of sense. Independence Day card, fighting for a belt. I could see that happening. Oh, if Wiley Other wins, that, they're just going to start it. trying to slaughter up the flyweight, aren't they? Maybe. Interim While they title wait for then. Tatiana. They wait for Tatiana and be like, I'll fight Aaron Blanchfield or whatever. Oh, We'll see what happens. Man, they're they're gonna gonna wait for Tatiana. Zhang Lee Tatiana now. is... Zhang Wei Lee Tatiana, like, I have to see that fight. That'd be unbelievable. Tatiana, stop getting hurt. <laughs> stop it. Quit. Quit that. Bad Tatiana. <laughs> Well, we will have uh, oh. more of these questions. Oh, we got one more. Last one. Casey, please tell my coworker Pete to bring back the mustache. We should all aspire to be more like you. Baddest stash in MMA. Pete, bring back the mustache, please. You got to go full camera, Casey. You can't said, do please. this on, oh. a, on a three split. Oh, Come do on. I have a three? I, I, don't have a, I don't have my shot set up. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, Pete. Uh, oh. uh, That's okay. You can still Pete, see close your left eye. <laughs> Just yeah, <laughs> there you go. Hey, Pete, grow the mustache out. Bring it back. Everyone wants to see it. Please, Please. do it, Pete. <laughs> Please. I believe in you. I believe in you. All right. Well said. Hit the music. I mean, what a way to end. <laughs> What a way to end uh, a memorable edition of the program. Uh, lots coming up. Again, go check out Swing Rounds with Mike Perry. It's delightful. It is delightful. Uh, preview show tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern. All your UFC Atlantic City coverage. And don't forget, Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern. Another rewatch party. We're going back in time, this time to 2016 for UFC 200 on the road to UFC 300. So thank you all. Back on the show next week. For Casey, for Jed, I am Mike Heck. The iconic voice of Esther Lynn takes you home. See you next week. Good night, everybody. Love y'all. This has been Between the Links, an MMA fighting production on the Vox Media Network.